impacting Democrats, it's impacting Republicans, it's impacting red states and blue states, um, and this plan is intended to address the suffering of the American people. So we, and, and frankly, we expect Republicans in Congress and Democrats to will support assistance that will bring relief to the people that they represent. This is a conversation. Uh, he, of course, gave a primetime address, as you all know, last week, it seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't, uh, to announce his specifics, and he has already had a number of conversations with Democrats and the Republicans. Those will continue. Uh, his clear preference uh, is to move forward with a bipartisan bill. Uh, there's no question about it, but we're also not going to take any tools off the table for how the Senate House and Senate can get this urgent package done. So we are only less than a day has he been president of the United States, but uh, he's going to continue to work with members of both parties to get it done. Francesca, go ahead. Thank you, Jen. I, have a, I do have a question about reopening schools, but I just want to uh, pick up where she left off on that and note that Republicans, including Lindsey Graham, who's expected to be the Senate Budget Committee uh, ranking member, have already said that the price tag on the president's proposal is too high for them. So is there any wiggle room on that number, and has he already begun negotiations with Mitch McConnell? Well, uh, first, the package wasn't designed uh, with the number 1.9 trillion as a starting point. It was designed with the components that were necessary to give people the relief they needed. So what's challenging is what are you going to cut? Are you going to cut funding for vaccinations? Are you going to cut funding for unemployment insurance? Are you going to cut funding for reopening schools? But it was laid out as his proposal based on recommendations from economists, recommendations from health experts, and as you've also seen, there have been uh, also an outpouring of support from everyone from Bernie Sanders to the Chamber of Commerce for the package and the components in it. But this is a discussion, it's a conversation, and uh, he is uh, no stranger to the process of filmmaking. So uh, we're at the beginning of the process, and, and as we continue, there'll be conversations with members of both parties of what will be in a final package. And rarely does it look exactly like the initial package that is proposed. With regards to reopening schools, what level of vaccination in teachers or students or level of testing does the administration think would be appropriate in order to meet the target date that the president has set? Um, this is a great question, and as I noted at the beginning, and as a mom myself, I want to know all the details as well. Uh, we're going to have more to share from our health experts um, in the coming days, um, and I will venture to get them in here to give you all a briefing on the specifics, but we really want to uh, lean into them on their expertise on that front. Go ahead. I'll come here to you. Right next. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, President Biden promised to end all new oil and gas leasing on federal lands when he was a candidate. The the order that you just mentioned that he signed today was much narrower than that. It's a temporary moratorium, and it only applies to Anwar. And there's some debate about whether he has the legal flexibility to even follow through with his full promise. Do, does the administration still have that commitment to them? We do, and, and, and the, um, uh, the leases will be uh, reviewed by our team. Uh, we just have only been in office for less than a day now. Uh, and I will just, since you gave me the opportunity, just also confirm for all of you, all of our executive actions that we released today were reviewed by the career staff at the OLC. Um, we went through that process in advance of releasing them. Um, that took a great deal of work from our policy teams, but um, that was a vital part of the process for us as well. Talk a little bit just about the kind of the preparations for getting the, the White House ready uh, and safe for the the, president, the new president. It's been reported that you did the five hundred thousand dollars worth of, of deep cleaning. Could you talk about the measures that you took to ensure that uh, the president is safe? Well, the, I would refer you to the General Services Administration, who oversees any steps like that. Um, what I can speak to, if it's of interest, of the steps we're all taking uh, to make sure that we are safe, he is safe, you are all safe. Uh, those include daily testing uh, when we're in the White House. It includes wearing N95 masks. I wore it out, of course, here today, um, and will continue to do that. Um, it includes stringent rules about social distancing um, and abiding by that in the building. Uh, that keeps us safe, but we're also, the president has asked us to also be models to the American people, and that's vitally important to us as well. So there are a number of new COVID uh, steps, precautions that we've put in place as of today. Uh, go ahead all the way in the back. Thank you so much, Jen. Thanks for doing uh, this in a database. Again. So climate change being one of the priorities, how does President Biden plan to work with Brazil during the campaign 
Biden criticized Brazil on deforestation, and then the Brazilian president criticized Biden back, and he was the last one to congratulate um, President Biden on his election. What is the expectation for uh, their relationship, and does he plan to speak with the Brazilian president? Uh, well, I don't have anything uh, to predict for you or, or um, advance for you in terms of a call or conversation. What I can convey on climate change, of course, and addressing the climate crisis, it's one of the four crises that he's identified will impact his administration, is impacting not just the American people, but the global community, uh, is that rejoining the Paris uh, Climate Agreement is a vital step toward doing that. The United States was one of the only countries in the world, as you all know, that was has not been, uh, has not had a seat at the table in the last uh, few years. Uh, a little technical step there is um, we have uh, submitted that to the UN Secretary General, and it will take approximately 30 days for that to take place. But I use that as an example because that's one step, but we also know that we need to be models here at home. Uh, as we are addressing an issue like this, the, the United States continues to be one of the world's largest emitters of greenhouse gases, and we need to put in place policies uh, and take steps here to address that as well. Um, but I'm sure we'll have more to discuss on Brazil in the coming months. Um, go ahead, right there. What are the next steps when it comes to Iran, and does the president have any plans to rejoin the nuclear deal? Well, the president uh, has, all, has made clear uh, that he believes that through follow-on diplomacy, the United States should seek to lengthen and strengthen nuclear constraints on Iran and address other issues of concern. Uh, Iran must resume compliance with significant nuclear constraints under the deal uh, in order for that to proceed. I will say that, uh, as I noted a little bit earlier, um, we would expect that some of his earlier conversations uh, with foreign counterparts or foreign leaders will be with partners and allies, um, and that we would certainly anticipate that this would be part of the discussion. And then could you just give us some color about what it was like for him going into the Oval Office? He's been waiting for this for so long. What was his reaction? Well, uh, you know, I spent a little time with him earlier, and he uh, had an incredible sense of calm. Um, uh, and he, uh, and, a, and a sense of uh, some joy, uh, of course, he spent the day with his family and his grandchildren and his children, and that always has an impact, I think. Um, but, um, you know, he also said he felt like he was coming home. Uh, remember, he spent uh, eight years here as the vice president, uh, playing uh, an important role as a partner uh, to President Obama. And, um, you know, that was the emotion that overtook him today. Uh, he's also eager to get to work. He was asking questions about policy and COVID and what's next. And um, so, uh, you know, that also reflects his desire to roll up his sleeves and, and get going. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I told you I was going to ask you, but I just skipped over it. Go ahead. I'll tell you now. Uh, so, in President Biden wants a theme of his presidency to be unifying the country. Does he think? that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer should drop a potentially divisive Senate impeachment trial? Well, he spoke today, as you all saw, uh, about unity in his inaugural address and the importance of unity in bringing the country together um, and the resolve of the American people in uh, helping to uh, get through this moment. Um, you know, we are confident, though, that um, just like the American people can, the Senate can also uh, multitask and they can uh, do their constitutional duties while continuing to conduct the business of the American people. And his view is that the way to bring the country together is to address the problems we're facing. And so that means uh, getting this COVID relief package through, having Democrats and Republicans take a serious look at that, have conversations with each other about how to move it forward, and he's going to leave the mechanics, the timing, and the specifics of how Congress moves forward on impeachment to them. And a uh, quick follow-up. On President Trump's inauguration day, he filed paperwork to run for re-election. Same day. Uh, does President Biden have any plans to do that today, late, or in the coming days? I will say, having talked to him today, his, his focus is not on politics. It is on... Uh, getting to work and solving the problems of the American people. Uh, so, and as he noted or, uh, on the campaign, uh, he will wait until uh, sometime into his first term to speak more about his uh, political plans moving forward.
Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jen. The president glitched today to repair alliances. Has he planned his first foreign trip yet? Well, we're only se seven hours in here. You ready for the foreign trip? Uh, <laughs> I'm ready, too. Uh, I don't have any details on a foreign trip to lay out for you at this point in time. Hopefully, we will at some point in time. Go ahead all the way in the back. Yeah, hi, uh, congratulations on your new position. Uh, Owen Jensen of EWTN Global Catholic Network. Two big concerns for pro-life America. The Hyde Amendment, which of course uh, keeps taxpayer dollars, as you know, from paying for abortions, Medicaid abortions. And the Mexico City policy, which under the previous administration they expanded to keep the tax dollars from overseas paying for abortions. So what, are President, what is President Biden planning on doing in those two items right now? Uh, well, I think we'll have more to say on the Mexico City policy in the coming days. Um, uh, but I will just take the opportunity to remind all of you that he is a devout Catholic and somebody who attends church regularly. Uh, he started his day attending church with his family this morning. Um, but I don't have anything more for you on that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, as President-elect, he talked about the possibility of using the Defense Production Act to ramp up the production of vaccines. Mm -hmm. Uh, having looked at more data, does he still feel that's necessary? Was that included, uh, for example, in any committee sign today? Uh, well, stay tuned. We'll do this again tomorrow, and there may be more specifics to share on plans on COVID tomorrow. I expect there will be, including more details on the Defense Production Act. He absolutely uh, remains committed to invoking the Defense Production Act um, in order to uh, get the supply um, and the materials needed to get the vaccine out to Americans across the country and remains committed to his goal of getting 100 million shots in the arms of Americans in the first 100 days. Uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, the President talked to about community today, and I've heard from people uh, who say, well, that's just talk. They want to know what action they're going to see to show that kind of unity. Can you, I mean, Peter mentioned impeachment. Can you, can you tell us what kind of action we can expect to see that will assure people that he wants to reach out to people who voted for him and people who did not? Sure. Um, well, first, I think anybody who has covered President Biden for some time or worked for him or spent time with him knows that um, he is somebody who always sees the optimistic side of working with people who may disagree with him, people across the aisle, and that has long been his uh, commitment and desire through his many decades in public service. Um, so his own history tells you how committed he is. But you know, part of it is his words, which he shared today with the American public on uh, quite a big stage. Also his actions. He has reached out to not just Democratic members of Congress, but also Republicans, not just Democratic governors.